Hello, party people. It is Will Pemble here. Today we are working on something kind of fun and cool. I'm using a software here. This is called SketchUp. And what SketchUp does is it allows you to build things in 3D graphically or digitally before trying to test them out in the real world. And so what you see here that I'm working on is basically the wheel assembly. As you may recall from our last adventure, we started working on a wheel assembly with two inch angle iron and we discovered that it really wasn't quite big enough for what we were hoping for. So what I've done here is built the thing in 3D, which I think is going to get us a lot more accurate view of our world. What I want to do is figure out ways to make this awesomely strong and rely not just on welding but also on fasteners to hold the whole thing together. This is the main bracket here. The main wheels will go right here. A bolt will come through this hole to have the whole thing pivot and then you'll have one wheel, one axle goes through here, one axle goes through here, one axle goes through here to hold the side stop wheels and then down here in the bottom you'll see this is where the upstop wheels will go. What I need to do now is I need to make sure that these holes match up with these, which they don't now, as you can see. And there's a hole that goes through here in the center. What I want it to do is I want it to come up, so I need to modify this piece of it so that I can bolt through and fasten the whole thing together. And then we might weld little plates in there to keep it all super strong. But for the first thing let's do is let's move this hole. Let's add a hole down here so that it matches up with this one up here. Come on in. So how far is this hole? The center of this hole looks to be about one and a quarter inches from the edge. So what I'll do down here is using my little measuring tape tool, I will draw a 1.25 inch rule and then I also know, just because I've been doing these a lot of the time, I know that the center of this hole is about 1.5 inches. And I can make it exactly 1.5 down here. And the same thing on the other side, 1.5. So now what I need to do is I need to drill a half inch diameter hole here and a half inch diameter hole here. I do that using my little circle tool it wants to know what the radius is. So for my radius, it would be 0.25, a quarter of an inch. I'm going to make it 0.26 because things, when you print things in 3D, they end up, a, the tolerances aren't exact. So if I do it at 0.26, then I don't have to tweak around too much, right? So that's one hole there, 0.26. And here's one hole here, 0.26. Next, I take my little push-pull tool and I push down until it looks kind of glassy, looks like reflecty. See that reflecty looking thing? When I click now, it pokes a hole all the way through the thing, all right? Then I'm going to go and find the other one, go way over here. Same deal. There's that little reflecty, boom, pops a hole right through. Now I've got my two holes. I don't need these guys anymore, so I can use my eraser to erase that side of it and that side of it. And that's gone. Same thing over here, erase that line, erase that line, and then if I look at it from underneath, I see my holes are gone, right? So now this matches with that, I can put a wheel right in there, this matches with that, I can put a wheel right in there. Right. Next thing I want to do is I want to have a hole go th straight through here, if you look at the top, of these brackets, 
if you look at the top one of these brackets, you'll see I've got a hole that goes straight through there. That's going to be the axle for the whole wheel assembly. I'll show you in the real world how that's going to work. But the whole thing is going to pivot right on this, this point. I'll show you what I mean by that. The whole system, the whole wheel assembly will pivot on that. So when, it, when, the, when the wheel assembly encounters a hill, if you're going from right to left, uh, or right to left on this thing, when the wheel assembly encountered a hill in the track, it would rotate around this central point, right? So that's what that's all about. What I want to do, looking down, looking down at the top of the thing, what I want here is I just want to fasten it. I just want to run a bolt up from this bottom one through the top one so that the thing is bolted together really strong, bolted together either both through the axles where the wheels are and bolted together here. So that's what I want to do next. I want to figure out a way to get this piece out of the way so that, oops, get this piece here out of the way so that I can have a hole go straight through there. So, the first thing I want to do is this piece is grouped, so I want to explode it, which is a way to ungroup things, right? So now all of these are individual components, right? That one back there is a group, but these are all individual pieces. So what I can do now is, I know this is, what did we say here? Was this one and a quarter inches in? What's that go to? 1.25 inches, so we probably want to go like 1.75 inches in here so that we can run a bolt through the thing and nothing nothing gets in its way, right? So there's 1.5, and again, I go down here, right now it's 1.900013. I can change that by just typing 1.75 or 1 and 3 quarter inches. So now there's, this is 1 and 3 quarter inches. So I want to, I want to just push this thing out of the way. Uh, I should tell you that I'm not really good at using SketchUp. I'm kind of a monkey at it, but I keep trying and I never give up. So in a perfect world, I'd be able to grab this one little line here, right, and move it straight back that way. But look what happens when I do that. It, it just makes a whole terrible mess of the thing. I'm sure someone with expertise in this could figure out a way to not have that be the case, but I'm afraid all we've got is me. And I grab, using the move tool, I grab this thing and walk it straight down and then straight back. Right, so that's a little bit wonky. Any Anybody who knows anything about 3D design looking at this would say, oh, Will, you're so cute. But we got what we got. So what this does for me here is this gives me an opportunity to put that third hole, right? So I can go through this up to that. Let me grab my little eraser tool, erase this, erase this, tape measure, make my 1.25 inch Grab my midpoint. Here's my midpoint. I'm going to go over here, get my, my 0.26 radius, which will, which will end me up with a half inch diameter circle when I 3D print the thing. Again, push pull tool. Get that little reflecty looking surface. Boom. And I've got my hole through the middle, right? So then when I look down through it, I can see that this is going to work out just 
fine. All right, see how my holes are going to fit through. I'll be able to put a bolt through here, and then these are going to be the axles for the side stop wheels, remembering that that's, that's kind of how the front of the thing looks, like that. All right. I want to do one other thing here. You see this piece? I've kind of simulated here in my 3D drawing, I've simulated a, a washer or a reinforcement or something that goes on there. I want this piece of the metal to be thicker, so I'm going to make it that way using this thing called an offset tool. I'm going to grab this, and then I'm going to go way over here, and I'm going to say, give me an offset of a quarter of an inch. Again, push-pull tool. Oops. Push-pull tool. I'm going to bring this guy up, and I'm going to say, let's imagine that that's a 1 8 inch thickness washer. Now... I have something maybe worth printing. The next step in the process is to take this bottom piece that I've designed, that we have designed just now. I want to select it to make sure that things don't get wonky, if I accidentally grab something um, and move it around, I'm going to hit Control G and I'm going to turn that into a group. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn it into an STL file, export STL. And I'm going to... I'll just save it into my documents folder. And I'll call it Iron Dragon Wheel Assembly 1.9.STL. I'll put it in the SketchUp folder. You see there's a couple of others, and there's a whole boatload of others in, in other places. But I'll just export that STL file. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to print it in 3D, and I'll have enough different bits and pieces. I'll have all of these three things printed. I can use the actual wheels and put those together. And then I'll have a really nice 3D printed prototype of my wheel assembly, and I won't have burned up any steel or material or gone to any extra work. I can I can prototype this thing and know if it's going to work before I ever uh, before I ever get working on the tools and it allows me to really really easily and rapidly change prototype and design and make sure that I've got it right before I before I go full workshop. So I'm going to do that part next. I'm going to 3D print this sucker and we'll see how it looks. So here I am now in a software called Cura, which is how I control my Ultimaker 3D printer. What I've done is saved my wheel assembly 1.9. That's the one that we just made. That's going to be the uh, that's going to be the bottom brace for the wheel assembly. And then I load it in. Now what you can see here is that when the thing is gray in the in the Cura software, when the thing is gray, what it means is that this is not going to print. It's too big for the for the printer bed. Also, you'll notice that it's upside down and for reasons which will uh, become clear in the fullness of time, that doesn't work either. So what I want to do is I want to I want to move this thing around a little bit. I'm going to use the rotate tool and I can rotate on any of these three axes. The first thing I want to do is find the green one and rotate it 180 degrees. Now it's got a flat surface to build as it as it prints out and we'll see some uh, I'll show you a time lapse of how that works as well. And then what I want to do is I want to just rotate the thing 45 degrees this way, and then it turns yellow. What that means is it's now the right size. It'll fit on the bed so that when we print it, it won't, it won't dribble off the edges of the thing, which is, of course, impossible, uh, and it won't work. So that's like just about the biggest thing in this kind of 8 inch by 8 inch by 8 inch box uh, that makes up my awesome 3D printer. So another thing that I can do if I want to see if it's if it's built right, if my if my file is built right, is I can zoom in and look close. I've got holes that go through where I sort of expect holes to go, and it doesn't have any it doesn't have any um, gaps or or chunks that are seem to be missing in the thing. That's one way to look at it. Another thing I can do over here in my view mode is I can go look at it in layers, and what it'll do is it draws the thing one layer at a time. The way 3D printing works 
is it prints things one layer at a time. It, it's kind of a, a, like a hot glue gun in a lot of ways. And so that's the first layer. You'll see down here there's the first layer and it corresponds to this layer here. Each layer I think is 0.4 millimeters. And then what it does is it starts at the bottom and it just draws up, 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 up. It'll just draw the shape one layer at a time all the way up, in this case, 507 layers will go through, and that's what the thing is going to look like. So I go and I look at the layers, and it seems like it'll draw it the way that it would work out well in the real world. Um, fast print, it's going to take 5 hours and 54 minutes to draw this sucker. If I say normal print, 16 hours, high quality. 26 hours and 10 meters of, of PLA. 40 hours if I wanted to do it super duper strong. So I'm going to do it fast print. That seems awfully, awfully, awfully slow. It takes a long time to print things in 3D. But you know what? I'm just going to set it and then go about my business because... It's going to take a lot less time to print it while I'm doing something else than it would take to not print it. So that's going to be the next step in the process, is I'm going to print each of these 3D parts. And here's where we end up. This is the finished, uh, this is the finished wheel assembly prototype, right? You can see it right here. I'll set it down right on the desk because it's kind of heavy, and we're going to have to keep that in mind as we, as we keep designing. But what happens now is we've got our outboard side. This would be the outside of the, of the thing. And then what I'll do is I'll just put it on the edge of the desk here as an example. But here's, here's how the thing will operate, right? So here's the top of the rail. Here's the side stop wheels. And it just rolls along ever so nicely. And what we'll do next time is I'll start to build all of this stuff out of steel. This is These are three inch angle irons and everything here can be built out of steel and it'll be super strong. Here's, here's, the, uh, here's where the axle will go through. The whole thing will pivot through this point here and it's gonna rock. So that's the scoop for that's the scoop for the wheel assembly for the day. Thank you for helping me bring physics, family, and fun to kids everywhere. Please like, subscribe, share, and I will see you next time.